All right, everyone. So, building automation systems. This is a this is a big topic. Um, it, building automation systems is a windy, tricky, and lengthy process to learn. And so, I'm hoping to create these video lessons to ease the pain. There's some really good information out there, but it's either hard to find. You got to dig through a lot of stuff, or it costs money. And if you guys don't have money, or if you don't have the time, hopefully these videos can help you guys out. Um, subscribe, follow along, and let me know your thoughts. So getting right into it, you know, this is kind of an intro lesson, the first one, lesson one. And so I'm thinking YBAS, uh, general overview, some of the terminology that you might hear or see, and then different types of controls. And so first and foremost, YBAS, right? And the easiest answer for me is energy efficiency. So in this pie chart here, you can see with space cooling, space heating, and ventilation, it adds up to about 34%. Now this graph's a little bit old, but the theory's the same. And so with BAS, the main thing you're controlling is those things, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Now third bullet, when utilized correctly, notice that's underlined in bold, because when it's not utilized correctly, these systems can actually cost you more money. And the reason being is, let's say a user goes in and overrides a zone, a room, or even the whole building, and he overrides it to 72 degrees heating. Well, he forgets about it. He goes home at night. This thing's running day and night at 72 degrees heating for who knows how long. Could be days, weeks, even months before someone notices. And so those overrides can definitely get tricky. And there's a lot of other reasons, but that's just a very easy example. Improve comfort and air quality. This one's huge because if you have a building that isn't circulating air properly, um, you can have a lot of stale air, and this can lead to sick building syndrome. Yeah, that's a real thing. Uh, basically what it is, is it's VOCs, volatile organic compounds, also known as off-gas. Uh, these are gases from carpet glue, paint, adhesives, vinyl tile, and basically the gases can seep out of those items for months and years after they're installed. Uh, and then really, what if it's just your coworker's disgustingly strong perfume or cologne, right? So air circulation is huge. Lower maintenance costs and downtime. So this is huge. You can set up reports, alarms, notifications, trends, and this can help maintenance realize when they need to change an air filter, um, different airflow sensors, uh, compressor run times, scheduled maintenance times. Um, the other thing you can do is look at the system to see what the issue is before going on the roof or driving out to a facility. So a lot of benefits there. And so what is a BAS? And building automation is the automatic centralized control of a building's heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, lighting, and other systems through a building automation system. Wikipedia. Uh, so that's a lot. What I want to focus in on there is the keywords, automatic centralized control. And so we're going to get into control systems in a little bit, but first let's discuss this automatic centralized piece. And so automatic centralized piece. These systems are intelligent microprocessor based controller networks installed to monitor and control a facilities, technical systems, and services. That's a lot of words, and if you were like me when I was first learning this, that made no sense. And so one of the things that I kind of helped me get through this is imagining a computer, right? And so I'll try to draw this out. Imagine you have a computer, right? Your desktop workstation. And you have inputs going into the computer. So first off, we have a mouse. Secondly, we have a keyboard. Thirdly, we have a scanner. And 
And so those are our inputs, right? Now for the outputs, we have uh, your computer screen, your monitor. You have a printer. And you have speakers. So I apologize for my really rough drawing, but that hopefully can kind of start to get you in the, the mental frame of uh, where we're going with this. And you'll see on the next drawing. And so when it comes to building automation systems, we typically have a centralized controller. And if you look up the images of a controller, you'll get the following image, right, on Google Images. So now you have this controller, okay? So here's your controller. Same thing with the computer, you have inputs, right? But the inputs are gonna be a thermostat, an airflow sensor. And so the same thing, we have our inputs, and now we're gonna have our outputs. So this is gonna be a fan or a motor. You're also going to have uh, damper controls. And now, so you might have several of these controllers throughout the building or different rooms, and then these are going to speak to a master controller for simplified terms. And so the master controller. Um, it's also called a supervisory device, uh, a JACE controller. There's a couple different names, but essentially that's what your building automation system is going to be based off of. And so hopefully this kind of gives you uh, a better understanding of where we're going with this. And now let's talk about the terminology, some of the acronyms or words that you've seen in this lesson uh, and in other research that you've done. Uh, sometimes people call systems different things and really it's interchangeable. Um, EMCS, BAS, BMS, DDC. And the first three or even four here at the top are essentially the, the same thing uh, as a general overview, right? An energy management control system, a building automation system, a building management system, and then direct digital controls. Essentially, this is interchangeable. These are all uh, the same when you're looking as a general overview. If you start to dive deep down into it, you're going to see some differences, but um, for the simplicity, today's lesson, they're generally the same thing. Um, a lot of people use them interchangeably. And so there's a lot of different words out there that are used in the BAS world. Um, obviously we can't go through them all, but these are some other ones that you're, you're going to see a lot in the industry and in your research, and so I just wanted to cover them here. Now these are different protocols, um, languages, uh, not going to dive into it today, but um, you see this, these uh, terms a lot. And as promised, we're going to get into type of controls. And so there's, there's three main systems that I wanted to touch upon today. And that's pneumatic controls, electromechanical controls, and then DDC, direct digital controls. So the first type of control that I wanted to talk about was pneumatic. This was one of the first systems in place to control HVAC systems. It uses compressed air. Now this drawing is a very simplified version uh, shown, but it's to give you a general understanding. And you can see pneumatics can get very intense and a lot of tubing and piping, um, a lot of places for air leaks. And so I go through a lot of the key points with pneumatics here. Uh, I'm not going to read through them all, but kind of give you an overview of the advantages, disadvantages. Um, you know, really, you're not going to see this system installed nowadays, uh, but you will see it in the field when you're going to retrofit or work on an existing building. You know, there's quite a few systems that are still using pneumatic. And so the next type of control is the electromechanical control. Um, 
easiest thing to reference here is a, a time clock, right? Or one of these old um, line voltage uh, thermostats. EMCs can go beyond a single device as shown here, just as pneumatic controls, right? You can, you can do a little more than this in just a single device. And so you can see some of the advantages and disadvantages, right? The list is starting to get longer. There's more advantages, but there can be some more disadvantages as well. And the last type of control, DDC, Digital Direct Controls. This is the latest and greatest, right? Um, they're starting to make advancements on DDC controls with some of the protocols, but in a sense, this is what's replacing pneumatic, this is what's replacing EMCs, electromechanical. Uh, this is where we're going and this is what we're installing right now. Another quick picture showing an installation of the controller. And so you can see here, DDC controls, the advantages are longer, but there's also some disadvantages compared to the last two type of controls. You know, you're starting to get into the more technical uh, side of things. There's training, there's new software packages that you got to learn. Um, so there, there is some disadvantages, but, you know, this is where the industry is, DDC. All right, so that's lesson one, you know, a quick summary. We discussed why BAS, number one reason for me, energy efficiency. But it could also be to replace some of these older systems. Uh, general overview, again, very general. Uh, hopefully we're going to dive a lot deeper into some of this stuff, but hopefully it wrapped your brain around what we're talking about. Terminology, again, not all the words that you're going to see, not all the phrases, but hopefully it's the most common ones and some of the uh, words and acronyms that you're going to see as you start to do this research. And then types of controls, you know, pneumatic, electromechanical, and DDC. The disadvantages, the advantages, uh, you know, and all that. So. Hopefully this video helped you. Uh, as I said, I want to continue to do lessons and you know, I might need some of your help. I need some feedback. Uh, what do you guys want to see? Uh, what can I do to improve? Do you want to see more drawings? Do you want to see more pictures? Do you want to see me talk more? Yeah, subscribe, comment below, uh, send me a message. Hopefully we can do this together. Alright, thanks for watching.